Welcome to Choice Classic Radio. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and help keep this show alive by donating at choiceclassicradio.com. For more of your favorite old-time radio shows, join us on our companion podcast, Choice Classic Radio Detectives, where we bring to you tales from the greatest detective shows the golden age of radio had to offer. And now, with 91 surviving episodes broadcast on NBC Radio from 1934 to 1957, we bring to you Lights Out. Ionized Yeast presents Lights Out. Everybody. Out brings you stories of the supernatural and the supernormal, dramatizing the fantasies and the mysteries of the unknown. We tell you this frankly, so if you wish to avoid the excitement and tension of these imaginative plays, we urge you, calmly but sincerely, to turn off your radio now. Mr. Obler, there's something I've been intending to ask you ever since the beginning of Lights Out series. What is the meaning of the phrase used each week? It is later than you think. Well, Frank, uh, no one knows who first said it, but for centuries, sundials have borne that phrase. It is later than you think. And the words are as true today as they've always been. The meaning? That the human lifespan is short and time is fleeting. And each of us has fewer moments than we think to live, learn, work, and uh, perhaps mend our ways. Well, that's very interesting, especially in these strenuous days. But tell us, what's the title of tonight's Lights Out play? As I predicted last week, come to the bank. It's not an order, but the story of a woman who, for strange reasons, soon apparent, is determined to get us to the bank. And now? Lights out. Everybody. Please. Would you come to the bank with me? Please. I... I've asked so many people, but they won't listen to me. You, will you come to the bank with me? No, don't turn your head. Please don't go away. Listen, if I tell you very carefully why I want you to come to the bank with me, you will come, won't you? He's locked up in there. He can't get any air. Oh, no, don't get excited. I didn't say he was locked up in the vault. All they've got in their vault is money. I don't care about money. All I care about is him. I, I didn't mean to tell you. All right, I did. You've got to come to the bank with me and help me. It's Fred Roth. He's in the bank and he can't get out. What are you laughing about? That's not so funny. I tell you, he's in the bank and he can't get out. He's been in there for, I think it's three weeks. Blast you, stop laughing. Please listen to me. I'll tell you all about it from the start. I'm a school teacher. At the Matson High School, I teach physics. It's a rational science. Cause and effect. Cause and effect. Mr. Roth teaches in the same school. Psychology, the way of the human mind. But that's not an exact science, is it? The human mind is not exact at all. And that started it. That's what started it. Mr. Roth said to me... Well, speaking quite frankly and candidly, Miss Moss, I don't think very much of your exact sciences. Two and two always add up to four, Mr. Roth. Not where the human mind is concerned. I don't understand. Well... It is my profound conviction that the potentialities of the human mind and body have never been realized by any human creature. But there have been great men. Plato, Lincoln, so many scientists. Yes, but only fractional greatness. Using perhaps one-tenth of the power latent within themselves. It's all a matter of concentration. Thomas Edison used perhaps one iota more concentration than the average man and became one of the great inventors of all times. I tell you, Miss Moss, if men would concentrate their minds to the limit, the universe would be theirs. That's a very innocent thought, isn't it? Just a teacher talking about the human mind. I thought nothing of it. Mr. Roth was such an intense young man. I... I liked his intensity. Just think what could happen if a man could bring his mind to the proper point of concentration... He could 
move objects with his mind. Yes, why not? Think that a table should move, and it would move. <laughs> Mr. Ross. No. Think that he wanted to be a certain place, and he would be there. Men conceive this civilization just by a thought, and here it is. All is power of thought over matter. A man thinks a book before the book exists. He thinks a house, and only then the house can be. All is power of mind over matter. I liked to watch his eyes while he talked. They were so bright and burning. And his mouth as he talked. The way it twisted. I couldn't help liking Mr. Roth, could I? We had dinner together once. Uh, will you have uh, coffee with your dinner or later? Well, uh, what did you say? The waiter wanted to know if you wanted coffee with your dinner. Oh, no, no coffee. Oh, we miss you. Very nice of you to have dinner with me, Mr. Ross. Well, on the contrary, I, I'm grateful to you. You're a, a very good listener. Thank you. I've done a great deal of work in the week since I last talked to you. Have you? Please tell me. Well, it isn't exactly work. It's, it's more of a decision. Yes? Yes, I, I've come to the decision to stop theorizing. Yes, I've decided to put what I believe into practice. I don't know what you mean. Well, it's quite simple. The powers of concentration. I've decided uh, to put uh, into practice... Uh, the uh, fruit juice is for the lady. Well, oh, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, for the lady. Uh, uh, concentration, Miss Moss. I've decided to put into practice my theory of concentration. I don't want to anticipate, but... I expect wonderful results, Miss Moss. I might even say unbelievable results. Unbelievable results. Oh, must I tell you more? Please, come with me to the bank. All right, all right, I'll tell you the rest. The day after he talked to me in the restaurant, Mr. Roth didn't come to school. I know that because at lunchtime he wasn't in his usual place in the cafeteria. And when I asked, they told me that he suddenly had taken leave of absence and that an extra teacher was taking over his classes. I was very disappointed. A week went by, two weeks. I decided to go see him. I took a few days off from my work. I found out his home number. Friday morning, I bought a new dress, very becoming one. Then I went to visit Mr. Roth. I was certain he wouldn't be angry with me. It was perfectly proper that I call on him as a friend. Yes, yes, Mr. Roth is at home. Uh, he had it for the two back rooms. He has not been out of there for a week. Won't even let me go in to clean up. You go right ahead. Head of the staircase and to the right. Mr. Ross, are you in there? It's Miss Moore. Could I speak to you for a moment? Standing there knocking, I suddenly realized that the door was ajar. Was he? But he didn't answer, and yet the landlord had said he was at home. I pushed the door open farther and glanced through the opening. <gasps> Mr. Roth! Mr. Roth! Dead! Oh, no, I... No, no, I, I, I'm alive. Oh, I, I thought... Oh, Mr. Roth, your face, the way you look, what... No, water, glass, oh, yes, water. yes, yes, yes. Yes, here. Oh, you, you are sick. I'm not sick, water. Here, here, drink it. I'll hold it. Doctor, I'll call a doctor. No, no, wait. But you're ill. Listen to me. Yes, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm not sick. Well, then what? I told you. Well, I, I don't know. I... I, I've been sitting here for a week. Sitting for a week? Concentration. Practicing concentration. Concentration. The experiment was, was most successful. Yeah, most successful. I, I've proven that I can do what some of the Orientals profess to do. Slow down through concerted willpower the essential life processes. A week without food and water. Is that not a triumph, Miss Moss? Well, I, I don't know. Mr. Roth, why do you do these things? Uh, I'm trying to explain it to you simply. The human thoughts are like the rays of the sun. 
spreading in all directions. By the use of a lens, the rays of the sun can be focused on one point. And instead of warmth, there, there is a focal point of intense light that can burn its way through all obstacles. And so it is with human thoughts. If, through concentration, a man could focus them on one point, he would be a god among men. I tell you, Miss Morris, that, that I am confident that I, through training, can become that one man in a million. Even, even as muscles can be trained, so I am training my mind. And the day when my training is complete, I will be able to do anything I desire. You hear me? Anything. 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 When he said that, thin and weak and tired as he was, his eyes looked at me and I was afraid. For him. I made up my mind right then. The first thing was to get him out of that room. He ate, rested, and then went out with me. I don't see why I let you talk me into this, Miss Moss. <laughs> I have so much work to do. The walk will do you good. But where are we going? Well... First, I want you to come to the bank with me. Beg your pardon? Well, you see, I, I've i been thinking of taking a little vacation, and I need some money. Going to withdraw some. Oh, oh I see. I, I, too, want to get off some place where I can concentrate. Oh, well, yes. Yes, most important. Yes. Uh, have you thought about going out to the country? These buildings, Miss Moss. Look at them. Steel and concrete. So firm and so solid. So enduring. You know something, Miss Moss? Walking so fast, I... Once upon a time, they were only an idea in man's mind. Perhaps even now they have no solidity, but are, are just ideas hanging in air through which a man with single-mindedness of purpose could walk as easily as if he were walking through air. Do you understand me, Miss Moss? But I, I'm not sure. The country would be a wonderful place to work. Now, wouldn't it, Mr. Ross? We went into the bank. He kept talking about the powers of concentration. I hardly listened to him. All I could think about was that somehow I had to get him into a new environment. The foyer of the building where the bank was, we went in. People, elevators. Suddenly, Mr. Ross stopped. He stared at the wall. I said, Mr. Ross, Mr. Ross, what are you looking at? This. This is the time. Time? Time for what? I told you. When my subconscious reached the proper point of incubation, I would know that my powers had reached the point where I could do anything. Mr. Ross, anything, please, I tell let's you. Let's go. Well, this is the time. Now. I must make use of that power now. No, please. What are you going to do? That marble wall. Straight ahead. I say I can walk through it. No, please stop joking. I will. I will. I will walk through. No. Mr. Ross, come back. Don't. Ah! Mr. Ross. Mr. Ross. Hey, the wall. The Don't. Ah! Oh, what? Mr. Ross. Yes. Mr. Ross, he walked through the wall. You hear me? He walked through the wall! You sit there smug and self-certain, don't you? It couldn't have happened. But listen, you pinhead mind, I tell you it did. I saw it with my own eyes. Mr. Roth walked right toward that marble wall and he went into it and then he was gone. Do you hear me? Gone. But I... I mustn't call you names and make you angry, must I? Because you must come to the bank with me. Yes, yet I'll tell you more of just what happened on that day. Oh, I never heard of such a... Now, thing. look, lady, take it easy. Get out of my way. The wall, he walked through that wall. I tell you, he, I tell lady, you, he walked through that wall. Please, sake, please. He said he knew it, he did do it. He walked through that wall. Lady, I tell you, he walked through that wall. Don't make a disturbance. Let go of me. Don't hold me back. I gotta yeah, get to him. Mr. Ross. I gotta get to Mr. Ross. Uh, this lady, all at once, yes, she screamed, and now she. Time to let go of me. Mr. Ross, he concentrated his mind. He said he'd walk through that wall, and he did. What? Yes, That's he did. Mr. Sir. Time to let go of me. 
That wall, Mr. Roth, went through that wall. I I've got to woman, go. I've got to get to him. Keep Mr. quiet. Roth, I've got Stop to get to him. Stop making that noise. I, Stop I, it. I... That wall is solid. Solid concrete faced with marble. You'd better go home and stop disturbing the peace. Throw her to the door, Riggins. So they put me out. I stood in the street. I didn't know what to do. And then I knew. I would wait there until Mr. Roth came back. And he would come back. He'd gone through the wall and he must have come out on the other side. And now he would walk around the building and come back and meet me there. So I waited. Good night, George. See you in the morning. I waited a long time. Are you waiting for something, lady? The bank's closed, you know. I've seen you standing here ever since I got on my beat, so I thought I'd talk to you. A long time. It began to rain. I stood there in the rain. Mr. Roth. And then a terrible thought. What if he... I ran to the door of the bank building. It was locked. Let me in. Please, let me in. Listen to me. You can't let me in, Mr. Roth. I've got to get to Mr. Roth. Hey, lady, what... Well, don't you know the oh, bank's been closed for hours? I don't care. I've got to get in. I've got to. I've now, got to get in. Now, take it easy, you. Hey, aren't you the one that's been standing out hey, here? Let go of me. Mr. Roth is in there. Now, lady. I will get in. Hey, the door. Let go of me. Yep. Mr. Roth, I've got that's to get in. That's the idea of acting like that. I will this. get in. I'll kick the sword. I will get in. Kicking the door in. Yes, now, you come along with me. Let go of me. Did you get in to see Mr. Roth that night? No. Order in the court. Order in the court. Prisoner will be held for further examination. Next case. I tried to tell them, Mr. Roth, but no one would listen to me. All night. And the next terrible day, no one would listen. Now tell me, do you have dreams, Miss Marsh? Asking me questions over and over. Do you think that people dislike you? Over and over. Have you often seen Mr. Roth or other people disappear? Over and over. When did you first begin to have these uh, hallucinations? But when I tried to tell them about Mr. Roth, they started to say terrible things to me. The fact of the matter is, Mr. Roth has disappeared. It is the opinion of the police that he decamped with this woman's money. Yes, took her money and ran off. Yes, took her money and ran off. I didn't care what they said. I had to get to the bank. You know why? Mr. Roth had started for the wall, and I had seen him go through it, and he hadn't come around to meet me. So there was only one answer. He was still in the wall. And while Mr. Roth was in the wall, they were keeping me in this hospital. I had to get out. How are you resting now, Miss Moss? Miss Moss, where? Window. Nurse, the woman in this room. She's gone. Out of the window. Nurse, nurse, Miss Moss is gone got away in the street, still raining. I ran along the dark street until I was at the bank. Closed. There was a dark doorway, another building. I hid in the dark and waited all through the night until morning, until they opened the doors of the bank. I went into the bank. I walked toward the wall, that wall. I wanted to run to it, but I, I walked. And I was there. The very wall he'd gone to. Mr. Roth. Mr. Roth. Are you in there? It's, it's Miss Moss. A- Ada Moss. Mr. Roth, please, if you're in there, answer me. They'll see me standing here by the wall talking. and They won't let me stand here. Mr. Roth, please. I- I've got my ear close to the wall. If you're in there, answer me. on the wall. I was right. You did walk into the wall and stay there. Yes, yes, but what are you saying? I, I can't understand you. Please, Mr. Roth, speak so I can understand you. Yes, yes, I understand. I will get you out of there. Help! Help! There's a man in the wall. Help me get him out. Mr. Roth, you here? I'll get you help. Hurry, people! Bring axes and picks! There's a man in the wall! Mr. Roth's in the wall! They put me back in the hospital. They didn't believe me. They didn't help Mr. Roth. I was very sick. I don't know how many days I was in the hospital. Then I was all right. They let me out. And this is your last warning, Miss Moss. 
You are to stay away from the bank. You are to behave yourself as a good, intelligent citizen you normally are. Your last warning, Miss Morton. And all the time, Mr. Roth was in that war, waiting for me to help him. And there was a little time left. A man such as Mr. Roth, powers of concentration. He could and did perform a miracle, walking through a war, but even conserving his strength and breath and the way he said, slowing down the vital life processes. How long do you think he could live entombed in that war? I had to get to him. But when I walked by the bank, hiding in the crowd so they, they wouldn't see me, I saw that there was a policeman there. They put a policeman there just to keep me out. I had to figure out some way to get in there. Tell Mr. Roth to keep alive that I was working to help him. I had to figure out a way. There was a store across the street. A store selling paints. That was the answer. Something for cleaning? Uh, of course, madam. Uh, how much do you think you'll need? Oh, I suggest a pint. Uh, we have it here in bulk. Open it? Sure, sure. Hey, see, it's standard cleaning fluid. It, uh, 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 lady, no. Uh, no, that match. Look out. Don't. Don't. It's inflammable. Don't. Help! Fire! Grab that woman! She said fire to the store! Fire! In a few moments, everyone was so busy that I was quite free to go into the bank. In a few seconds, my ear was against the wall. Mr. Roth! Mr. Roth! I, I'm back! I'm back! They, they tried to keep me away from me, but I'm back. Mr. Roth, can, can you hear me? Alive. Yes, still alive. Oh, Mr. Roth, what should I do? What? Yes, I will. I will. They won't stop me this time. Something. Get something and tear it on the wall. Fire axe. Off the wall. Mr. Roth, look. Look. If you could see, I got a fire axe. I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you. Will you get out? We'll get you out. Yes, I will get you out. The mob is cracking, Mr. Roth. I will get to you. Get me out to you. No one will stop me now. They don't want to help you, but I'm helping you. Give me that axe. Oh, no, you won't stop me. I've got to help Mr. Roth. Give me that axe. I'll give it to you. Lady, I told you not to stop me. I told you not to stop me. You killed the policeman. No, no, I'll kill you. I'll kill you. I'll kill you all. I'll get away. I'll turn Mr. Roth. Give that to me. I'll kill you. Stand back. Stand back. Don't stop me. I'll get away, Mr. Roth. I'm locked up now. They locked me up. You've been my first visitor in weeks. Weeks. Do you know what that means? All these days, he's been in that war, holding himself alive with all his will. But sooner or later, if he thinks I'm not going to help him, he'll give up hope. And he'll lose his will to live. And suddenly he'll die. Do you hear me? You'll die. Please, please make them let me go and come and help me save Mr. Roth. If you don't help me, it will always be on your conscience, won't it? At night when you're alone and you can't sleep, you'll open your eyes and you'll see Mr. Roth entombed in that wall. But it won't be Mr. Roth anymore. Just the bones of a man. Bones and dead, decaying flesh. And worms. And the, the skull will talk to you and ask you, why didn't you help me? So I ask you again, please, please, won't you come to the bank? Mr. Obler, a, a man living in a bank wall as well. Don't let that prevent you from going to the bank and buying a few war bonds. No, seriously. Do you really believe a human being could possibly accomplish such a feat and then keep himself alive by sheer willpower? Well, Frank, certain Hindu cults have been able to obtain unbelievable results in the suspension of the ordinary human bodily functions by fasting and complete immobility. In plain talk, they don't eat, they don't sleep, they sit still... And their pulses drop to the point of what is normally fatal. And yet they live. The human mind, Martin, is a deep, dark power whose potentialities only the future will bring to complete fulfillment. Well, now what about next week's story? Title, Chicken Heart. The story, but more about that after just a moment. And I'll use that moment to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, 
that life doesn't necessarily have to seem hopeless, even if you are miserably thin and weak and nervous. Perhaps you, like thousands of others, Mr. Obler. Well, somebody told me that next week's play, Chicken Heart, should have been entitled A Brainstorm. I won't deny that. I've never enjoyed writing a story more in my life and never hesitated more about broadcasting it because of its terrifying nature. Brainstorm the story is yes, but don't forget that tomorrow's brainstorm may be the truth the day after tomorrow. But truth or fiction, chicken heart, next week. Yes, Lights Out will come to you again next Tuesday at the same time. Be sure to listen to Arch Obler's amazing story of chicken heart. And, and if you need more vitamin B and iron, be sure to try ironized yeast. The one and only ironized yeast. With the big letters IY on the package and on each tablet. question everyone is asking. How long will my present clothes last? Well, folks, that depends on what kind of care you give them. On whether, for example, you keep your clothes free of grease spots that make them look worn, run down, and old before their time. So get some Energine cleaning fluid and use it to remove grease spots from your clothing the moment they appear. Energine gets rid of grease spots easily, quickly, neatly. Helps make your clothes give more satisfactory wear. Get some tomorrow. Energine cleaning fluid. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. That concludes today's episode. We'd like to thank you and remind you to donate at choiceclassicradio.com. Remember, your donations make episodes like this possible.